Hi, welcome to White Light Lasers YouTube channel and my first video. I'll be showing you Full Spectrum Engineering's Hobby Laser Generation 4 40 watt tabletop unit and the modifications that I've done to it. You can see this is not a stock machine anymore. The first modification is a new control panel. I got rid of the test fire buttons and the 10 turn pot. The 10 turn pot is not necessary as the software now sets the laser power digitally and if you're not using the 10 turn pot the test buttons will actually overpower the laser causing a shortened life. I've retained the laser off button, the button for the lighting, and this button which controls the plug on the back of the laser itself which was supposed to be used for the pump and fan and I'm using it for a 12 volt power supply to my table purge. I'll cover that later. I've also recently just added ambient shop temperature and water temperature meters. The water temperature meter is is glued directly to the small end of the laser tube just under this panel here and the ambient temperature is underneath the laser hanging out from under the panel. The second modification is a USB control panel which magnetizes on top of the laser. Inside it is simply a cheap gaming keypad with arcade buttons wired to each of the controls. A piece of software called joy to key sits in the system tray and actually changes the presses of these buttons from the from the control pad to button presses in the full spectrum retina engrave software. Buttons here for start and stop, lock and unlock the laser carriage, perimeter and home position, and jog directions. This allows me to use the laser from a standing position without having to go over to the computer. The third modification is a downdraft vent system. The table purge button here turns on a 120 millimeter fan below the table in this location here. Under the table is a couple of thicknesses of acrylic which have been cut out to form a small plenum chamber and that plenum chamber has been covered in aluminum foil. Additionally, some pieces of copper have been placed over top of the holes to keep the laser from hitting the fan. What this does is it purges any additional gases that build up in the cutting table which sits on top of this aluminum plate. I used to cut a lot of acrylic and have parts explode out of the table whenever a pocket of gas would be ignited by the laser. This caused me all kinds of problems, shifting parts around, damaging parts, and generally being a nuisance. So this has helped greatly. It's completely eliminated the problem. The exhaust just blows through here down to under the table, comes out under here and is picked up in the normal path out of the back of the laser. The fourth modification is a modification to the gantry or x-axis of the laser. This modification will actually add about three quarters of an inch to your cutting area. Normally the limit switch is located underneath the end of the gantry between the belts on a small L-shaped piece of aluminum. The head of the laser has a small piece of metal which sticks out underneath and contacts that switch. On most machines, when it hits the switch, there's about almost an inch of travel remaining before it hits the end of the gantry. On mine, I've removed that switch from underneath and I've actually stuck it to the side of the gantry using a piece of two-sided 3M servo tape and I've extended the reach of the switch itself so it contacts the top plate on the carriage. You'll notice 
the laser stops about 3 30 seconds of an inch from the side wall of the unit. This allows me to cut a lot closer to the wall. I can't engrave this close over, but it does give me some more room before it bumps that switch. The other end of the axis is stock and it simply stops where it normally stops. The fifth modification is a modification to the y-axis or the movement of the gantry in the machine. The first step is to remove the L-channel which covers the motor which drives the y-axis. This won't give you complete area of three quarters of an inch extra because you can't cut where the motor is. But you can run that laser up to about a sixteenth of an inch away from this shaft. So you can overhang this bed and get an additional cutting area. These plastic bumpers here I removed three quarters of an inch from by wrapping a piece of three quarter inch wide tape around them and cutting off with a hobby saw, just a little hand saw, and simply went around it and scored it until it broke off and then cut off the remaining piece. Both sides were modified and the gantry now travels an additional three quarters of an inch. It doesn't mind. The steppers will keep going until it hits that end stop. This doesn't change the home position switch at all. The only other additional thing you need to do is this cable chain needs to be remounted. It was originally mounted to this screw here and if you leave it on this screw it will bind up against the front of the machine. I drilled a new position for it to mount a little farther in and it no longer interferes. Rolls smoothly right up to the front of the panel. No problem at all. And that gives you another three quarters of an inch on the Y axis. These axis modifications actually cost me nothing. Free. Simply changing the way the axis works. Obviously this will void your warranty if you still have one at this time. My new area for cutting according to Retina Engrave by jogging the laser around using the move relative I can now move the x-axis 15.42 inches and the y-axis 10.3 inches without bumping into the end stops on either axis. I hope this has been informative. Thank you for watching.